Robin Hood and the Merry Men and Woman adventuring like never before. What is it about? What we think of it? Coming up. Hi, it's Taryn. And Stella here from Mipu University. Welcome to our Shoot You Play, where we talk and discuss about games, what we think of it, and then also ask you what you think of it if you have played this game or anything similar. Today we have The Adventures of Robin Hood. So this is an adventure type of game. It's a cooperative game from Thames and Cosmos, provided by VR Distribution here in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about our experience, what is it about, and what we think of it. Yes. Well, let's take it, Taryn. Yep, and this was, of course, a nominee for the Spiel des Jahres this year. So, Ooh. Um, here we go. So, um, what we have here, this is the board. Um, it's very much sort of a free-form map. And then the game is driven by this book. There's, I think, six or seven different, um, different scenarios in mm. here. And it's set up to be a game that you can just start playing. You start reading the book and it teaches you the rules as you go along and it teaches you how to use the board as you go along. I do like games like that. Yeah, so this is, so what we'll say here, like we've taken this board past scenario one. It's not really a spoiler. It's not spoiling how you solve the scenarios. We're just gonna talk you through some of the mechanics that are introduced a little more slowly through the game. Um, but it is, Advent yeah. cal calendar style? Well, firstly, it's an advent calendar style of game. So if you'll mm -hmm. see the board, you can't see mm -hmm. it very clearly here, but all throughout the board, there are little sections that can be picked up and flipped over. And some of these, some of these are just enemies that will come and go. And some of them are pieces that are relevant to the story and things that you'll learn as part of the story. And you know, that's, that's really, that's how this game attempts to um, deal with the old point and click genre. Because really that's what this is. This is the latest type of game that is trying to replicate that old point and click computer, ga computer game mm -hmm. genre. So, you know, we've seen plenty of games do that with a book, like Sleeping Gods um, from Ryan Lockhart. That sort of just goes, you've got a board and you've got the scenarios in a book. Um, but it's a, a static board, essentially. This one, you're actually revealing and um, hiding guards as you mm -hmm. come across them. Um, there's also been, as you said, the Seventh Continent was a very um, popular oh, one. Oh, yeah, yes. Which um, many people have uh, so cool. compared to uh, playing with a card index while having a game on the side. So mm -hmm. I think what they've done here with the Adventures of Robin Hood with... Um, you're still reading a lot of the scenarios out of a book, but by being able to see what comes and goes on the board, it, it adds a very different um, a very playable style to it. An um, easier entry, kind of like more gateway yeah. and less components. So the basic thing for how this works is you'll see that the board is broken up into areas of light and shade and then obstacles like trees and, and things like that. Buildings, rocks. Um, there's a bag that holds all the various pieces and on any given turn you'll draw a piece, one of these big discs, and it will tell you whose turn it is. Mm. So you don't always know the order. There'll be one for each player colour, there'll be a white one which lets both players take a turn, uh, there's a grey one I think which lets you choose which player takes a turn, and then there'll be a couple that represent the the enemies as well and that will make bad things happen so you don't know what order those things are going to come out in but you know you're going to get you know through two or three actions per player for each round of bad actions that will come um, when it is your turn uh, it's kind of free form movement so you've got these pieces here you've got your meeple and then you've got two short moving meeples one long moving meeple and another one and you basically have to line up a movement path um, across the board without so, going over any obstacles for overhead 
camera so it's like you need to stand it up but let's say it stand up and then it looks like that and then that's your figure and you end it up you end up there yes and uh, you know, that's the essence of the movement you can move more slowly so if you don't use the uh, long one you get to put a white cube into the bag and this helps you in combat because if you've ever come up against a guard and you want to fight yeah. that guard very simple you start drawing cubes from the same bag and there are purple cubes which get put in periodically they represent failure and there are what i can't believe i drew exactly what i wanted to i wasn't well even done looking for that. <laughs> Luck and is there on your are, side and there are white cubes and so very simple battle mechanic you draw up to three cubes and if you succeed you get to uh defeat the guard and you would flip it back oops <laughs> you would flip it back over you would get some hopes so this goes up and down based on the good things you do versus bad things happening there are nobles that you can defeat to also get uh, more hope and also get some objects which will help you in different parts of the game and then periodically you can see some colored ones up here these are also in the bag you draw uh, periodically the game will tell you to draw one of these and that will uh, flip some more guards and some more nobles face Ups up or and downs, face down yeah. and keep the board moving. So you know, like a lot of these games that have a um, survival or an ongoing sort of mechanic, like with Seventh Continent where you're, um, in addition to trying to solve the quest, you're also constantly trying to find food so you don't die. Yeah. Um, <laughs> In this case, you're trying to solve a quest and you're also trying to make sure you're consistently defeating guards and nobles to keep your hope up on this track. Mm -hmm. And then if too much time elapses or the hope comes down here, you'll run out of our glasses and you'll lose. Um, so yeah, six or seven scenarios. Uh, you can play each scenario twice. So there's even a thing here to tell you which version of the scenario you're on. If you fail the scenario, yep. you can obviously you try the, again. If you fail the scenario, you can try again and the book will lead you in a slightly different way. You're still going to the same conclusion, but it will um, let you experience that outcome and that um, you're completing that challenge in mm -hmm. a different way. Um, and that is you know, that is the essence of the game. You can play at between two and four players. Um, there's, there's other characters. I don't have them here. I've left them in the box. But there are other characters. There are evil characters that will come and get you. And there's a whole lot of pieces in the board. There's lots of pieces here. Oops. Yep. <laughs> that you can flip over. Some have question marks. Some, uh, some will flip back after the snow yep, is yep. done. Some's... Uh... So it's question marks and then you can interact with the board when you are your figures there and then you open the book um, that is matching that number that is yes. on there. So there's this one, like... Uh, Someone to talk to. A, maybe a fry tuck yeah. person. Got a boat here. You can sail the boat from one side of the river Ooh, to the other. That, that will cool. have different outcomes in different scenarios or like maybe that, so. it doesn't say like this I mean, oh they the, the river does for like the river does go there and that may not happen in every scenario who knows anyway i think if i say too much more i'll, I'll uh, <laughs> reveal it. too many bits of it but yep. that is the game simple simple mechanics um mm -hmm. free form sort of board and a nice clever mechanic with this advent calendar tile and the age process. recommendation is 10 plus so it is a family game i um you know I love point and click type of adventure game. Yeah. I do like cooperative games. So if you don't like cooperative game, my, obviously, you know, you're probably not even watching this video. <laughs> but if you like com uh, computer game like click and point and click, which I actually really enjoy those games back in the days when I used to play a lot of PC games. What I was missing on those is that I can't play with someone else because I think most of those, if not all of them, I actually solo play of PC point and click game. Now okay. this one, this one, is cooperative and is multiplayer. So it's kind of answer my request back in the day. I want to play point and click with mm -hmm. multiplayer. Of course, there are other games that are like that which I have been enjoying, and this one is, you know, is similar, but. I love the mechanics of getting the bag and then pulling it out and whose turn it is. I think that is 
That is very clever because sometimes it matters. So there's a bit of a luck there. Sometimes it matters which turn it is. And sometimes there's a like a gray one or something means that it could be one of us yeah. or the white one or something. It would be different type. I'm not going to say much of that. I just remember that might be a spoiler. Oops. Yeah. No, not a big, not a big spoiler. So I do like that. And then um, I do like this board where, okay, it's really easy, accessible, and you can just like flip it up and down. And then there's the book with uh, can I have the book, please? Yep. Thank you. With two ribbons, not just one, with two ribbons. We'll mark you where you up to, and then there's sort of also location of where everything is. Yep. Um, my, I, I really enjoy playing this with you. Um, if there is somebody that is a little bit um, alpha player, they might be prone to it a little bit because there's no hidden information from uh, of one person. Uh, and um, I just wish that the boards made a little bit thicker because uh, not thicker I would say like a, a different material because you see here I'm just worried that I might damage this one eventually because you'd be like f um, trying to take it off and then flipping it up flicking it back on and mm. so on multiple times throughout the all scenarios that bit I'm just slightly um, you know I just like oh I'm going like I've already like Damaged yeah. slightly this bit. Yeah, the gaming perfectionist is not going to like the fact that you will yeah, you yeah. will tear the edges of these guards. You it's will. going to happen over yeah. a, over a full campaign. I reckon these guard pieces are going to get uh, pretty mangled mm -hmm. in the corner. Yeah, but it doesn't affect the playability at least. Exactly. There's no there's, there's no, no hidden. Yeah. You know that a piece of that shape is going to be a guard. Yes, that's true. Unless um, there's a secret we haven't come across. Exactly. We haven't gone through all scenarios yet, but. Yeah, Karen tried, but and just like, oh no, it's like I, I damaged it by accident. But still, it's it's a, a really pleasant game. It's it's cooperative, and there are times it's really hard. And the pieces I find is really um, really clever as well. The fact that you move around the board by these pieces, so it's like there are times where you're like, okay, I'm I'm just gonna try to maximize my movement. This is actually standing up, but so that you can see it. Uh, how do I get to that? Just using you know, the littlest pieces like that, for example. Yeah, just touching this and then I manage to go here. Like that, for example. I think that's very, um, there. it's very interesting. And families, I would imagine, families would like it. I think so. And I think, you know, it is a... It's very clever. Like, whatever yeah. it is that, you know, whoever that comes with the idea of, obviously, Mr... Michael Menzel. Thank you. Yeah, I think, um, so for me, for me personally, you know, narrative co-op games where you're spending most of the time in the book it's not my style of game mm -hmm. so you know this will never appear at the, t at the top oh, of any enough. of my lists yep. but for a game the way it's set up it's this it's a relatively simple uh, version of the game with a very clever way that they've set it up mm. and i think it forms a really good family night sort of game um and if you do like if you enjoy narrative, if you enjoy telling the stories and doing a lot of sort do. of thing, it's going to work really me, well me, for me, you. Me, me, me. Yes. Yeah. So that's really good. Um, I will warn. I think it, it's fair to warn people that the intro scenario is not. It doesn't give you a full representation yeah. of the game if you yes. only play the intro scenario and think, well, that was that was easy, that was obvious, not much happened. The intro scenario is just teaching you a couple of mechanics. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really pick up until the second scenario. So make sure you give it that second try. Yeah. What he said. Yep. So I like the f uh, the fact that you started off captured. I'm like, oh, Darren is captured. Was it captured? Yes. You I were was captured. captured. <laughs> I was little John and I was captured by that guard. That's how you start. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can tell people that. I was like, oh, no, I have to rescue my husband, Tarrant. The little Tarrant, not little Tarrant. <laughs> And some of these other pieces, they come in through the latest scenarios. Mm. Um, and they, yeah, it, it doesn't add that much complexity to the game. It just adds a richness of story. Richness of story, yeah. I like this. Like, how, how cool this this book's looking. Look, right? And then I do like the smell of new books. Or paper in general, sorry. I'm sure there are some of you out there that also like the smell of books. Do you? Like... Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's, it's a, I don't know what, what's, there's something about it. It's like Kindle, it's like, mm, I don't know, I 
don't really like Kindle that much, although I could use the space so I don't get the book, so I get board games instead of a book, but... Mm. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's well known that a lot of people have a, a smell reaction to the written word. Oh, really? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Because it, it, it's more tactile. Oh, right. In addition to having the, ta the actual tactile, you've also got that other mm -hmm. uh, sense. I do like the look of chunky books, but yeah, this is like, it's good. Like, it's almost like, um, also in a way, some of the, um, what is it called? The adventure one, the choose your own adventure, but it's not all. It actually tells you where to go rather than choose your own adventure. Well, you, the choose your own adventure part is on the board where you, where you want to go. Yeah. Right. It's not an Very easy much. game as well at times. We lost before. We, we did lose our scenario. We made a couple of um, critical choices that just... We got very close, but we made yeah, we a couple close. of critical choices that drew us uh, dreadfully in the wrong direction. Yeah. So it's not Happens. like... It's not that easy. Like, as Taryn said, the beginning scenario might be a little bit easy, but then, wait, there's more. There are tricks. They'll trick you. Have you played this? Have you played anything similar? Have you, do you used to play point and click PC games let us know in the comments so I will have a look um, just see that you know I'm, I do miss those games at times like the max journey what is it called the Sam and Max journey or something focus journey no and then they the rabbit or somebody and then they go around and then look at like the giant um, pans or the giant cattle I don't think it was cattle the giant mm. I don't um, recall that young. one no we I know growing up we played the um, the first Discworld point and oh, click yes. game. Oh yeah, yes, that's uh, well regarded for being very difficult and very obscure in places, but we got through it. Did your dad play with you? Yeah, Did we you... all sat around the computer and. Um... <laughs> so see, it was like a family like that sat around the computer. I mean, this is it's much better to s to sit around the table facing each other, right? Yes. I mean, and that was a solo game, right? But you just it was do yes. it. Yeah, yeah. See. Um, and there's another one that's like the, the Monkey Island one, the Curse of Monkey Island or something. Mm -hmm. Is it called the Curse of Monkey Island 1, 2, 3, 4 or something? I don't remember that one. Um, we didn't have there's that one. There's so many. And there's also, of course, our oh, King Quest is different. It's more adventure and then there's scrolling. Or it had some side scroll elements side scroll, yes. to it and you could die a lot. And um, there's no save button. There was in King's Quest VI, that was oh, the, okay, yeah. the early one. It was like, oh no, there's no save button. That was gaming in the day. Well, exactly. And you got really good at the first levels. No. But then again, you know, I'm, I'm happy that the gaming has evolved and then they listen to people. Okay, there's a safe mechanics. Like, given this one, oh, like you just leave it as it is for the next scenario, right? Yes, and that's that's right. There's a couple things you flip back, but ultimately you leave the guards and those pieces. I mean, this is the game as we left it. Um, with a couple of spoilers hidden, but you just uh, break the board mm. apart and um, and put it away as as it was. Mm, that's how clever. you pack up. Yeah, and that's it. Which I'm doing now. So I assume that's it. You don't want that's to. Talk? It. <laughs> that's how and say that's it, Fox. See you later. And yes, that's it. So let us know in the comments again um, if you have played, if you haven't, what do you think of it? And we do videos like this. The review, the how to play, the Stella Shawn Suite and so on. So if you can, please hit that like button. We would be um, really appreciate that. We will really appreciate that. And um, hopefully you can join us next time. You can subscribe if you haven't already done so. There's a meeple somewhere in the corner as well. I'm also on in Instagram, so find me there as well. And hopefully we will see you next time. Bye.